Hi everyone, this is Kate Penbari, Marketing Coordinator at Richie May & Co. I will helping, be helping the field in questions on this webinar. Thank you again for everyone coming out today to join us for the webinar. Each of the presenters will introduce themselves more in depth as we get to them. So just a few housekeeping items. Everyone during the webinar today is on mute. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the questions panel or in the chat. I will see those and I'll answer them if I can. Otherwise, I will field them to our presenters and we will save doors, those towards the end to answer if we have time. If we don't have time to get to your questions, I'll make sure to get your information, your question passed along, and we'll start an email string with you and the experts who can answer that for you. Today's webinar is being recorded, so if you do need to jump off for any reason, we'll send you a video recording in the slide decks to everyone so you can review what you missed or have that for reference. That'll be available and I'll distribute that within the next few days. And please feel free to pass that along to anyone and share it um, in your organization that you may feel could benefit from it. There will be a short survey that comes into your email after the webinar, just three or yes, three yes or no questions. Nice and simple, so we would really appreciate it if you could follow up with that. And we will also be providing the contact information for the speakers in the slide deck and sent out with the webinar recording and slides. So if you think of any questions or comments after the webinar today, please feel free to contact Seth or Nathan, whose contact information will be included in there. So to kick off our presentation, we have Nathan Lee. He is our partner in charge of our advisory services and technology services. And he's going to tell you a little about, about what we are going to talk today about today. Great. Thank you, Kate. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Welcome. And we're excited to uh, have this opportunity to present to you the uh, our partnership with Zeral and uh, share with you what we're doing from an automation standpoint and uh, the ways that we're serving clients and leveraging this technology to, to bring truly transformative uh, technology and capabilities to our mortgage clients. So we're, I'm excited today to be joined by Seth Cohen here with Richie May. And uh, in addition to Seth Cohen, uh, also to be joined by Eric Sandler, Dan Sussman, and Peter Sandler with Zeral. And uh, so thank you again for joining everybody. And we'll uh, we just want to take a minute and share some real quick uh, or do some quick introductions here and have uh, Eric and Dan and Peter just briefly uh, introduce themselves for you all. Hello, my name is Eric Sandler. I'm Zeral CEO and co-founder. Uh, Zoral is a company that created uh, uh, quite a few uh, global fintech installations that are highly scalable and we'll share some of our uh, capabilities with you today. Good afternoon all, this is Dan Sussman. I am Chief Operating Officer and Chief Product Officer for Zoral North America. My background is 35 plus years in mortgage banking and technology. Hello everyone, my name is Peter Sandler. I am product manager and sales engineer, going to be running some demos for you today and uh, looking forward to, to sharing, uh, you know, what is possible now with automation. Great. Thanks, guys. And uh, so if you would click to the next slide, Peter, we have just a, a brief agenda. And as uh, as Peter mentioned, we'll start out, do a do an introduction, just talk about the current Kind of environment and landscape in the mortgage industry, particularly from a technology standpoint. Uh, and then we'll dive into uh, a couple of demos. We'll, we'll introduce the, the partnership with Zoral, dive into a couple of demos here to give you all a flavor of, of the capabilities of the platform and the capabilities of the Zoral team. And uh, But really just share a couple of, of examples of things that can be done not necessarily the only things that can be done with a, a truly holistic automation platform. And we'll get into that as we go through this. Uh, and then we'll wrap up and, and talk about some specific challenges around underwriting automation and uh, data extraction and conditioning and, and the, the, the capabilities required by a system to effectively do that decisioning and conditioning that goes into underwriting. And we'll, We'll leave time at the end for some questions. So if you have questions, as Kate mentioned, drop those into the chat and we'll get to as many of them as we can here at the end as we wrap up. 
So, so if you skip to the next slide, slide there, Peter. Uh, yeah, I, I think what what you would all agree is 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 going on in the market. There's clearly a, a tremendous amount of of interest around technology within the mortgage industry, uh, and the mortgage industry, to a certain extent, is playing catch up to a lot of other industries, including within financial services. And the, the industry has lagged behind in, in adopting some technologies that have been widely used in, uh, by companies in a variety of other industries uh, over the last several years. And, uh, and IMBs have, have started to make investments and focus those efforts really on the front end, uh, sort of borrower experience and borrower interaction. And, and you see that with tools like POSs, and, and um, you, you see it with, you know, with websites that have been enhanced for kind of multi-channel and engagement with borrowers. You see a lot of this investment that's been made on the front end, but there's a whole host of, of technology that can support the, the, the loan manufacturing process and helping companies to do that more efficiently, more effectively, reduce errors, reduce cycle times, and drive down the, the cost to originate. And so, you know, there are some companies that are making significant advancements in this area, making significant investments, but there are a lot of others that are just now starting to, to explore this. And so there's tremendous opportunity within the mortgage industry for technology uh, adoption, for innovation, and for truly uh, transformation of that loan manufacturing process. There's a, there's a lot of manual work that goes on there, and there are technologies that uh, that are that have become much more mature and much more robust. And uh, and as we'll highlight for you here today, there are things that technology can do that even just a few years ago would have been very challenging uh, for companies to try to accomplish. And so you see. You see some of the big companies that are doing this, but really what we want to emphasize today is that this technology is, is not only available to the large companies, some of which have gone public and are making significant investments in the technology, but this technology can be leveraged uh, by companies uh, of all sizes. Um, and so we're excited to, to share with you some of those, uh, some of that information here today to hopefully help you to uh, you know, address the, the cyclicality challenges in the business, in the business, the increasing cost to originate, and uh, and the efficiency and just scalability challenges of the business. So with that, I want to I want to introduce uh, Zoral, and uh, we're excited to be partnering with Zoral, and and have developed a, a a close relationship and partnership with uh, with the Zoral team. And as we've as we looked at the opportunities, um, you know, and the companies out there that Richie May could partner with to bring these solutions and help our clients from an automation standpoint. Uh, Zoral really represented a, a mature, highly experienced group with a, with a track record of, of experience that goes back about 15 or 16 years. And, and they, they have a platform that, that has embedded within it all of the technical capabilities that companies would need to be successful. That was important to us as well. Uh, and they, they had experience in the mortgage industry, but even before, before the mortgage industry, going back 15 or 16 years, serving financial services businesses globally. And so they, they provided the, the real technical horsepower and strength here uh, as part of this partnership. So we're happy to be engaged with them and happy to have Eric and, and Dan and Peter and the whole team uh, working on these projects with our clients jointly, and and so I want to want to hand some time over to Dan and and uh, Eric as well to introduce Zoral and uh, here on on this slide and the next slide as well, just to give some some background on Zoral for all of your benefit. Great, thanks, Nathan. Hey, Peter, can we go to the next slide, please? So um, Zoral, you know, as Nathan indicated, we operate one of the largest uh, automation and digital transformation software development labs in the world. 
And we really, at the end of the day, are, are specialists and experts in the areas of you know, intelligent workflow automation, optical character recognition or OCR, robotic process automation, RPA, and natural language processing. Those are just some of the highlights and benchmarks of our solutions that you'll see today. Um, we've developed over the last 16 years, as uh, Nathan had indicated, you know, really world-class, highly configurable end-to-end -end automation platforms for mortgage banking, as well as other fintech uh, verticals. And the company, again, founded in 2004, operates globally with offices located in New York, London, and Berlin. And all of us uh, obviously are working from uh, remote locations, mostly our homes. Um, the company has invested over 350 man years um, in our platforms um, and continually evolving and developing our platforms to incorporate all the latest and greatest technologies. Um, to date, we've completed over 100 automation and digital transformation projects uh, delivered uh, worldwide to some of the biggest names uh, in financial services, insurance, and telco. And again, we've uh, developed and implemented multi, multiple fully automated end-to-end -end lending platforms for both consumer, commercial, and retail banking. Next slide, please. So uh, here are just a, a few of our customers, and you can see that there are some fairly recognizable names on this, uh, on this slide. And uh, there are a couple of, of really big names that uh, we like to call out. And uh, uh, in addition to working in the mortgage space here domestically, we've done uh, work with uh, global companies like Sky, which is a, a very large telecommunications company in Europe. Um, obviously, I think you guys are all familiar with companies like Standard & Poor's, the rating agency, uh, down at the bottom, SunGuard, which is a very large insurance company. Um, and then uh, over on the far right, second line, you see a company called Arvado Bertelsmann. This is a multi-billion dollar financial services company uh, where Zeral has um, developed and implemented and maintains a very sophisticated consumer lending um, decisioning engine. And Arvado's primary customer is a little company called Amazon. So you can imagine the um, due diligence that went into uh, making sure that Zeral had all the appropriate um, uh, credentials to, to do business with a company like Arvado Bertelsmann and again with Amazon. So just a little bit of a sample of some of the things that we've done in the past and the companies that we've done uh, work with and continue to do work with. Next slide, please. So why is intelligent automation important? Um, it's really designed, if you look at, uh, at all the solutions out there, and as you're searching for your particular solution within your company, you really want to make sure that you're automating you know, what is considered highly manual or repetitive tasks. That's the ultimate goal, is to make sure that we're starting to reduce the manual data input and stare and compare. Um, we want to reduce cycle times. We want to be able to decrease and eliminate data input errors and introduce consistency across all of your different documents, all of your different people that are doing uh, data input, and obviously build that integrity into the process. Um, again, re re reduce or eliminate stare and compare work. We know that even after 30, 40 years of uh, continuing technology advancements and third-party service advancements in mortgage industry, we still start out on the left side of the continuum and originate a loan and, and close a loan in very similar fashion to we, the way we did it 30 years ago, even with all the technology. We're still doing a tremendous amount of data entry, a tremendous amount of stare and compare. So our mission every day is to try and reduce that stare and compare and data entry. Um, you want to make sure that any solution you look at can source data from your existing CRM, point of sale, loan origination service uh, system, servicing platform, or even third-party service providers. You want to be able to source documents from existing systems and third-party services. You want to be able to get relevant data from all those PDFs from JPEGs and GIF formatted documents. Um, you want to be able to recognize, categorize, and even index source documents. Those are very important uh, capabilities of an automation platform. And very important is you want to make sure that the platform can uh, perform very uh, complex comparative document analysis 
And we call that triangulation or fuzzy matching. And we'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Um, you wanna make sure that your platform can apply dynamic rules for eligibility and guideline adherence while executing very complex analysis and calculations, things like pay stubs and tax returns. And obviously at the end of the day, we want to make sure that our platform uh, is improving productivity, improving customer satisfaction, reducing your costs, enhancing data integrity and facilitating the consistency across loan manufacturing process. So again, a lot to digest there, but that is what the Zoral Richie May partnership delivers. And that is what our platform is going to show you here in just a moment. Peter, are we ready to, uh, to tee that up? Absolutely. So we're going to start with a little back office uh, candy. We know that uh, the tech industry is not big on providing, you know, the accountants and the secondary market folks with a lot of toys in terms of uh, automation and technology. So we want to start here and and uh, and and play Santa Claus with uh, with a really cool piece of technology that we built that's in the marketplace and is in production right now. And we call this purchase advice warehouse line automation. And what you're going to see is a 100% humanless process where we basically go into each investor portal and we pull down the um, purchase advices for that given day and we ingest those into our engine. We do the OCR data extraction. We normalize that data and then we analyze it and calculate any uh, necessary arithmetic. And then we parse that data back into the LOS. We also append the document directly into the E folder and then we continue the journey with an automated um, notification to the warehouse bank that that uh, purchase advice is being sent or uploaded and clear the warehouse line. We can also introduce goodbye letter automation as well as first payment automation. So Peter, will you uh, fire up the virtual desktop? So what you're going to see here is a virtual desktop. This is 100% uh, in the cloud. All these solutions are hosted by Amazon and are AWS. And uh, so they have all the requisite elasticity and, and security required. Um, so let's go ahead and wake up the robots and get the process started. So those of you that sell loans to a particular investor called PennyMac, this might uh, look very familiar to you. And so what we've done is we've mimicked what a human does. And the human normally would log into a portal and provide their credentials and then navigate that portal. Here it's 100% humanless. So this is all being done by artificial intelligence and robotic process automation. We are actually navigating the pipeline in PennyMax correspondent portal. We're going to find a particular date that we're going to go back in time for this presentation. We're going to upload all of the purchase advices from a particular day in January. There were seven of them. And so what you're seeing now is basically the robot being slowed down dramatically and acquiring each one of those purchase advices from the PennyMac portal. And those are being uploaded into the Zeral automation platform where we will perform uh, OCR and, uh, and data comparative analysis and we'll put all that data into our analytical data warehouse where we'll perform analysis and calculations and then again as i indicated earlier we'll parse that um, back into the los so right now you're just seeing this grab each one of those purchase advices again these are slowed down if we let the robots work at their normal speed this would just be a flicker kind of like a strobe light and you wouldn't be able to follow what's happening and then in just a moment, while all these are ingested, we're going to show you a login to an LOS. And in this presentation, we'll use Encompass. And so again, those of you that use Encompass as your current LOS, you'll see uh, this is a very familiar process. And again, we'll be able to answer questions uh, towards the end of the session here today. So just jot down any questions that you might have. Now, this um, right out of the box applies to about 20 different um, investors that we've mapped um, these PAs. So implementation becomes very, very quick. We also have grabbed probably uh, the top 10 warehouse banks that the industry uses. So again, we've done all the heavy lifting and we know that there are nuances uh, between each purchase advice 
and each warehouse bank, and we've accounted for all those little nuances. So the next thing you're gonna see is the Encompass login. And I'll apologize in advance if we have any latency. I think everybody that uses Encompass knows that they have good days and bad days in terms of performance. So again, this is 100% humanless. These are robots and artificial intelligence that's doing this work. And so right now we're navigating the Encompass pipeline and we're looking to match the purchase advice borrower name and loan number with that same data in Encompass. And so we'll be pulling that loan up and then we'll show you how we append the purchase advice directly into the E folder. And then we parse the data from that purchase advice with any calculations necessary to align with how you use the PA form in Encompass. We'll reconcile against the expected and the actual. We'll provide a variance notification if it exceeds your tolerance. And then the next step would be to um, fire off uh, either an email with the, the uh, corresponding PDF of the purchase advice or going into a third party portal uh, such as WLS and uploading the purchase advice and the wire amount so that the warehouse bank can clear that uh, particular loan from the line. So I'll pause here and just let the engine catch up a little bit. And again, what you're gonna see is all these purchase advices being appended directly into e-folders. And now that drop down that you just saw is where we would go find the PA form. And so now you're gonna see the robot go in and, and parse all of the data from the PA directly into the PA form. And if you're using the expected column in your business, then we would show that variance. Those data elements would already be populated by somebody in your organization and we would calculate the variance. If the, if the variance is greater than a tolerance that you establish like a penny, then we would fire off a notification indicating what the variance is and where you should go look for it. Now, we know that uh, investors typically never overpay, but they sometimes do make mistakes in terms of what you're expected to receive. So we want to make sure that you're notified of that. Um, the arm wrestling between you and your investor is still on your side. We can't program our robots to do that. Um, and then the next thing you're going to see, I guess we're going to do one more, and then Peter, let's stop it after this one. And then we'll show the um, uh, an internal dashboard. So all of this is traceable and auditable. And the customer-facing dashboard that you would receive allows you to go in and look at the day's activity, previous day's activity, or a custom time period. It also allows you to check the status of each of the runs. And by the way, our automation tool runs from 1159, I'm sorry, from 1201 in the morning to 1159 at night. So as you know, some investors will post PAs throughout the day. And most likely you have people that are sitting and monitoring all day long, waiting for a particular investor to post a PA so you can clear that line. This takes care of all of that. Um, and it's all automated. And so we walk, listen and wait for uh, those PAs to be posted to the, uh, the different investors. Additionally, knowing the nuances of many loan origination systems, for example, if there is a user in a particular loan file and the robot cannot do its work, the robot will simply come back another time and will do that multiple times throughout the day until they can complete their work. And the cool thing about robots, as you probably know, they don't take smoke breaks, they don't call in sick, uh, they don't take lunch, they don't take vacation, and they basically work 24-7, 365. So the next thing we'll so show is the, um, the email that goes out to a particular warehouse bank, and I think in this presentation we're using North Point Bank. And so all they simply require is a PDF of the purchase advice, and uh, then their folks internally will take care of the clearing of the line. In other cases, as I mentioned earlier, WLS or Prime Merit are third-party providers, and they have all different requirements. So I think in the spirit of time, Peter, maybe we'll cut this one off and we'll go to underwriting automation, if that's okay.
All right, so this next automation presentation is um, really about uh, taking a sliver of what we call uh, our under auto, underwriting automation suite. And we're just gonna show you a little sliver of how we analyze pay stubs, W2s, 1040s. And uh, this will be a purchase transaction and we'll be showing you how we triangulate between all those documents. So not only do we analyze the data that's on the document, but we triangulate between all of the documents. And we also introduce bank statement analysis so that we can really come up with a comprehensive view of um, what an underwriter needs to look at in terms of combining W-2 income with self-employment income and making sure that we're applying uh, all the eligibility rules and all of the agency rules, et cetera, et cetera. So Peter, if you'll fire that one up. Turn sure it over to you. There. Okay. We're going to start off with a set of borrower documents that's similar to an e-folder and we're going to look at a scenario if we take a look at the borrower's 1003 uh, where the borrower is looking to get approved for a 1.2 million dollar loan so this is a jumbo scenario and i'm going to be doing some manual steps in production this is fully automated so we're going to go into a demo environment here and upload the borrower's e-folder and we're going to submit this to OCR extract data from each of the documents. And this is Zoral's proprietary OCR extraction technology. So there's nothing that we are buying off the shelf. This is all proprietary technology here. And we've slowed this down so that we can keep up with the process. But what we're seeing on the left are images of the documents as they're being OCR extracted. And we're checking all of them to make sure that uh, we're doing a fraud check. So making sure that there's been no doctoring of any documents. Um, that there's no embedded malicious code. And we can see in the middle uh, column in this table that we're categorizing each of these documents. And we can also see the number of fields that we're extracting via OCR. And at the end of this process, we are running an, a series of underwriting and income calculations. And all of that is sent to an analytical data warehouse, which is a central repository that sits underneath the platform and all of that data is normalized for consistent formatting. And once it's in that consistent formatting in the analytical data warehouse, we can send it to any destination that we like. For this demo, we prepared a download, uh, an, an income calculation worksheet, which I'm gonna download right now. And this is going to contain the results of the process that we just ran. So while I'm pulling this up and um, zooming in so we can get a good look at this, um, just to paint some context, we're going to look at the borrower's pay stub and we're going to tie it back to the, the worksheet to have some context of what we're looking at. So getting that pay stub, we can see that the borrower is paid in a semi-monthly pay period and that they have a gross pay of 8.3K. So the platform is automatically multiplying the gross pay by two. So we have our 16.6K and then multiplying that by 12 to arrive at an annual salary value of 199.5K. This is an example, a simple example granted, of an automated calculation that is free from human error. So in data integrity goes up. And as this scales with more and more calculations across the entire portfolio of loans, this saves a lot of time. Furthermore, saving even more time, we have the ability to triangulate and fuzzy match data across the entire set of borrower documents. So as an example, we have the 2019 W-2 income of 199.5K. If I were doing this manually, doing stare and compare, I would look at the 2019 W-2 document and I'd compare that to the corresponding tax return as an example to make sure that there's no discrepancies. The platform is doing this automatically for all of the data. And if there's any discrepancy, it will automatically pinpoint and quantify the discrepancy and then fire off an alert to the, a processor or an underwriter to reduce the time that it takes to resolve that discrepancy. Dan, if you'd be so kind as to walk us through the rules that we applied on this worksheet. Thanks, Peter. So again, there are lots of different rules uh, depending on the investor that you're selling loans to and their eligibility requirements. So we just out of the box and for presentation purposes use some agency guidelines in terms of you know calculating income from a pay stub, 
Um, but it is very dynamic, so we can actually read the, the loan program or product type or investor type from the LOS and apply different rule sets. So you can have rule sets for FHA, VA, uh, investor overlays, or just apply agency guidelines to start. Um, and because this scenario was a purchase transaction that relied on uh, both employment and self-employment, Peter, if you'll scroll down a little bit, we'll touch on the tax returns. So we took two years of 1040s, we extracted the relevant data from the Schedule C, and we came up with some basic averages. Um, and we also triangulated across a current period P&L that the borrower provided. And then if you slide down a little further, what we wanted to do was make sure that the P&L um, had the representative cash flows going through the business bank statement. So we grabbed two bank statements from the business um, and we analyzed those. We extracted out the payroll deposits and we isolated the large deposits and deposit, deposits from uh, the business customers. And you can see here that we've got uh, customers by the name of Cognical, Cashco, and Sane. Now, if you have a LexisNexis account already established, for example, we could leverage your account and robotically go into LexisNexis and basically load up these three companies, run the LexisNexis to determine whether or not those companies are legitimate, in good standing, et cetera. So again, further giving the underwriter additional tools to validate uh, cash flow and source of funds, et cetera, et cetera. Additionally, what we can do is we can compare side-by-side -side bank accounts. So we can look at personal accounts for the same time period, compare those to the business accounts for the same time period, and make sure that there's no funny games going back and forth. Um, we can also, as Peter indicated, determine whether the bank statements are even legitimate. So um, our fraud detection capabilities are unsurpassed in the industry. Nobody can do what we do in terms of the fraud detection. Um, and that includes determining whether they've been photoshopped, cut and pasted, font differentials, malicious code. There's a lot of things that we look at to make sure those documents are legit. And if for some reason we find that a document does not pass the sniff test, then we'll kick that out and notify you guys that it needs further review. Um, so we're going to um, talk a little bit about how we develop our rules. And again, this is proprietary, but to su suffice to say, we have a library of over 4,000 different pay stubs. And so our ability to extract the, the eligible income from a pay stub, even during the most complex case, like a, someone in the military or a teacher, we've devised very, very sophisticated uh, artificial intelligence and business logic and rules to um, determine what an underwriter would do in a normal situation. Where things like pay stubs have um, two critical elements, pay frequency and pay type, we have also modeled those so that we know that if the pay frequency is weekly, then we would request an auto, uh, auto request for consecutive pay stubs so that we can calculate all of the nuance on each of those pay stubs over a four week period of time. So just a sample and a sliver of what is capable with the Zeral platform and how, our, how we approach automated underwriting. Obviously, there are other areas of, of underwriting, uh, not just income. So you know, we handle uh, asset and bank statement analysis, and that can be one bank statement or up to 24 month statements. So if you're doing non-QM and you wanna do cash flow analysis or uh, you know, identify loans and liabilities, and we can pull metadata from those statements and, uh, and really get sophisticated. So it's just a matter of what your particular uh, need would be. So Nathan, we'll kind of go back to the slides if we can. Yeah, yeah, you bet. And I, I was just gonna make mention there as, as many of you on this call know, as, as uh, clients and, and friends of the firm, uh, you know, we've done a lot around benchmarking over the years and and particularly here in the unprocessing and underwriting area. As you well know, that's an area where mortgage companies spend uh, a significant amount of time and incur a significant uh, amount of the expense associated with originating a loan. And so, you know, we've, we've watched that over the years as a firm and and over the last several years, that's averaged somewhere around 750 or to $800 per loan for processing and underwriting. So if a, if mortgage companies can leverage a, a platform such as Zoral's automation platform 
that that embeds within it OCR and decisioning and, and all the rules that would go into to doing the automation and to be able to extract data off of documents. If you can if you can start to layer technology into that process of, of processing and underwriting alone, uh, you can you can have some so you can see some pretty significant benefits, not not only from a cost standpoint, uh, but also just from a from a cycle time standpoint. So this is an area uh, where there's tremendous opportunity for mortgage companies and leveraging a platform that is robust enough and mature enough that's that's been around and that has been tuned and trained as it's ingested, you know, millions of documents uh, with different bank statements and pay stubs and so on. It, it gives mortgage companies tremendous uh, power uh, to, to really to really automate, to start automating in that front end of the process where there are significant improvements to be had from a cycle, uh, from a cycle time standpoint and a cost standpoint. So, and, and you know, and, and I think as we mentioned in the beginning of this call, another important thing to highlight here is the fact that, you know, these are just a couple solutions that were demoed for you here today, just to, to give you a flavor of what can be done with this platform. But there are obviously, and we'll come back to this here in a minute, there are obviously a significant number of use cases within, within mortgage companies and within that loan origination and a loan manufacturing process to, to leverage technology and leverage automation. And so these are a couple, hopefully, that just give you a feel for what's possible. Yeah, Nathan, we're going to show one more. Um, and again, this is a little bit fun, a little bit spooky, but we're going to show you um, uh, how we introduce human in the loop, um, because that is a very big, important factor in uh, what we do from an automation standpoint. So, Peter, if you would uh, tee up that uh, demonstration, please. Sure. We're going to use a driver's license in this scenario, and we're going to upload this for OCR extraction in a demo environment. And basically, whenever you're using OCR to extract data from a document, you need a human in the loop to uh, ensure that you have as close to 100% level of confidence with the data that you're uh, you're collecting as possible. So as as good of an OCR solution as you might have, and Zeral's OCR solution is able to automatically parse data um, with a, a very high level of accuracy about 90 to 95% of the time. For that extenuating circumstance, you need to automate a pass off to a human in the loop, and in our case, it's our team that provides the service to ensure that we get to a 99.999% level of accuracy. So we're gonna go ahead and submit this driver's license. And uh, whenever we OCR extract the data, we generate a data quality confidence score. What you're seeing right now is the pass off to the human in the loop. So the OCR generated in this case, a score that fell below the threshold uh, or tolerance level. And that's something that you can set and we can advise best practice on. And so in this case, the human in the loop is reviewing the OCR extracted data in the fields on the right and comparing it to the image of the document on the left. In the driver's license over here, we have a last name Hall and there's a one in front of that. And the OCR incorrectly read that one as a T. So the human in the loop makes the correction and submits this for the automated workflow to continue. And as a little bonus in this workflow, we're now gonna have a robot in just a moment here, pull up the corresponding DMV for the driver's license. It's going to automatically enter in the driver's license number, and it's going to use artificial intelligence neural nets to get past the CAPTCHA, outsmart the robot blocker, and expose that this is a valid driver's license. It also is capable of doing this using computer vision for the visual counterpart where it needs to identify which pictures have stop signs or school buses or what have you. It can actually perform better than humans can over there. So as a result of this little scenario here, we have OCR extracted data with human in the loop corrected data, and we have cognitive robotic process automation, which marries artificial intelligence with robotic process automation to get the additional driver's license validation data. And so the key idea here 
is by using Zoral's automation platform in partnership with Richie May, we're able to weave together different automation modalities and extend what otherwise would not be possible in the automation space. So I will pass it now back to Nathan and we'll resume the deck. Thanks, Peter. Uh, I, I just make a quick comment there because I think it's it's well understood by those that are in attendance today. But with with date with data extraction accuracy in somewhere depending on the platform that's used for OCR, maybe ranging from from 70% to 90 or 95% with Zoral, as Peter mentioned, that's still not good enough in the mortgage industry. And so what what's really critical is exactly what Peter just showed you, and that is that there needs to be within the process a human that is embedded into that into that process whereby any data ex that is extracted that doesn't meet that threshold can be can be viewed uh, by an individual by by a person and in most cases by more than one person to make sure that you know, one person doesn't make a mistake. You have a couple people stare at it and make sure that it gets fixed because the mortgage industry isn't going to tolerate anything less than essentially 100% accuracy, especially when using this technology on the front end with processing and underwriting. The risks are just too great. And mortgage companies do not want to deal with the repurchases that would result from data accuracy that's only 90 or 95%. And so, uh, that that was a that's a critical piece of, of this and, and something really important to understand as you consider automation and how it can be deployed within the low manufacturing process. And Eric, Thanks, I'll hand over to you on the next slide. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so Peter, if you could go back up one, please. Yeah. Thank you. So. Uh, my background is uh, both global head of risk management for United Bank of Switzerland in previous lives, as well as the inventor of the platform called SAP HANA, H-A-N-A. And so I've been both a risk manager and a CTO in my past lives. And uh, I would like to share with you a CTO perspective, uh, because I think we've had a business perspective shared here up to now. And from a CTO perspective, I would like to explain to you the challenges, architectural challenges that a company has in solving both automation and digital transformation problems. Um, and the solution often is to uh, put together different technologies, creating uh, something that's very hard to maintain, that requires an army of developers and very, very slow to change, which leads to failures and a very, very significant barrier to entry and expense. And while RPA or robotic process automation is only a piece of a solution that you have seen, and we've shown you some uses of uh, RPA, it's very important, but it's only part of the solution. It's used where you don't have APIs and you have, uh, or incomplete APIs, and you have systems which are legacy systems, or like we showed you with DMV systems or websites that are not meant to be interrogated by programmatically, right? So in order to do both digital auto transformation and automation, it requires more than remo just removing the keyboard. Uh, re it requires automating the brain as well and using advanced AI, as Peter showed you, uh, using neural net to crack, uh, for example, uh, the codes and advanced business logic. Uh, also, while we're talking about automation, I think Dan alluded to the fact that you can't automate everything. There are places where humans are needed to make decisions uh, and the technology needs to be smooth and handing over decisions to humans as to, and then continuing and doing things that technology does best. So it's very important that a technology works with humans and doesn't try to automate everything because it's impossible to automate everything. In terms of automation, uh, in order to be able to do this in a reasonable amount of time, uh, expense and be able to quickly innovate and iterate, you need all your configurable logic to be in one place, from one console. Just like if you were to fly a plane, imagine if you had some pieces of your controls sitting in the back of the plane. Uh, by the time you would get to that, your plane would crash. You really need to have all your logic and everything in one place. So that includes customer experience management or CX, 
analytical data warehouse, decisioning engine, logic and business rules and policies, your workflow, of course, your robotic process automation, your AI, OCR logic that Nathan was talking about. Then to add, to add to that, you don't see your customer. You need to have understanding of how your customer reacts to things, whether it's internal customer, uh, your employees or external customer, your borrowers. So you need to be able to understand and uh, grab behavioral data for customers and be able to dynamically react to it, to understand if there's fraud, if there is other events involved. You need, of course, everything to be transparent. You want complete auditability and have a robust audit trail of every decision, everything you do. So you could actually, from a compliance point of view, understand what you have done uh, for your loan file uh, manufacturing. And of course, you hear a lot about low code, but uh, we have created both low code and no code paradigms in the platform to allow us for rapid iteration of, uh, of solutions. Uh, you need a very robust Swiss knife-like data integrations. We have integrated literally hundreds and hundreds of uh, data sources uh, uh, in the mortgage industry and worldwide. You need to have robust system integrations to CRMs, LOS, POS, accounting systems. And you need to also understand who is watching the robots because robots are like uh, humans. You create uh, an army of robots that solve problems and all of a sudden you have a management issue. So you need to have ability to control the robots, to monitor their performance, to understand how to gracefully resolve their work. And so we have built, uh, create dashboards and you need dashboards on KPI monitoring capabilities. Uh, all these uh, things are needed to significantly reduce the maintenance challenges. And if you don't have these things integrated into one, you will have a very, very uh, big challenge in iter to iterate and develop new solutions and differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself against your competition. So when you build something, you need to build things for change. As you've seen in the recent 1003 example where 1003 changed uh, or the upcoming CFPB rules change, would potentially change, you need to have a technology and architecture that's configurable and is built for change that could incrementally create solutions, but it's also capable of handling end-to-end -end automation, right? And uh, what we see is a lot of times companies go towards best of breed, which means they buy it's like buying it from Axel from Mercedes and a body of a Porsche. While I like both cars equally well, and they're great cars, if you put those things together, you're probably not going to get a luxury car. So the same thing happens when people try to build technologies that are not really meant in perpetuity to work together. They might get some early wins, but maintaining that and, and uh, controlling that from one holistic uh, system is uh, very, very difficult and very expensive. Uh, Finally, data is king. Uh, the mortgage industry is probably much further behind than most financial industries. And uh, in finance, uh, understanding data quality is a big challenge. So uh, do you guys know what your data quality is when you make decisions? Because if you have garbage in, it's garbage out, no matter how good you are in decision making. Uh, in the platform, we have dealt with that. And for example, when Peter showed you an example of taking a driver's license, Behind the scenes in our audit trail, we could see the probabilities and the quality measures for every single data point for every single field. And so as we make decisions and as we put the logic in, we know what kind of data quality we're dealing with and we could deal with that very effectively, right? So uh, you need to understand a very granular level what the data quality is if you hope to turn your data into uh, your uh, advantage and your data is your biggest advantage. Finally, you need to listen to customers, whether they're internal customers or external customers, your borrowers. Uh, one approach to everything doesn't make sense. Uh, oh, people's situations are very different. People are very different. And you need to dynamically uh, adjust your logic and adjust the way you work things. And for that, you need to be able to hear and see your customers. And we have developed uh, a lot of technology to deal with that so we could dynamically solve problems automatically, right? And finally, you need to be able to experiment, try and deploy, do A-B testing. You never know upfront everything uh, that you want to do to automate. You want to be able to innovate. You want to be able to iterate. You want to try things and deploy quickly. And for that, you need, again, a platform where all these different technology modalities could be deployed very, very rapidly and very quickly. And it took us 16 years, but we believe we finally created a platform that allows us to do just that. And you've seen some... Uh, solutions that we've shown you that uh, that illustrate that
and we would love to show you more if you're interested. Thank you. Dan, over to you. Thanks, Eric. So I think the audience probably gets the messaging. And so we'll skip this slide because we've only got a few minutes left with everybody. So um, let's skip this one, Peter. Yeah, we can skip this as well. Um, and again, this deck will be available. Um, so I'd like to kind of turn it back over to Nathan and just kind of conclude here and uh, yeah, I hopefully can, allow us a few questions. Yeah, I, I can just make some concluding kind of comments there of those last couple slides as, um, as you kind of flashed them over the screen. Uh, I, I think the first one, obviously, introducing the Zero Automation Platform uh, was, was a follow-on to the comments that Eric was making and talking about the the capabilities of a platform that really helps companies solve the automation needs that they have from beginning to end, a truly holistic platform that they can manage uh, everything that they're doing from an automation standpoint. And that is what the Zero Automation Platform represents. And then that next slide was just a list of some of the use cases. If you go back just really quick, Peter, I'll just spend 10 seconds here. It's just a list of some of the use cases as we uh, have been working with clients that uh, that have been identified as as areas where there's significant manual effort and uh, where companies have have an interest in leveraging automation to to reduce that that manual repetitive kind of stare and compare and, and data entry and and uh, pushing the files and so on that takes place in mortgage companies. So there is an extensive list. It's not just a couple of things that we showed you here today, which were really just examples of what is possible. And so, you know, with that, I think, uh, you know, we can wrap by saying that clearly technology is going to play a bigger and bigger part of, uh, of, of mortgage companies operations going forward. And as, as rates move up, as they have here over the last few weeks, you know, it, it obviously puts pressure on margins margins are reduced and puts pressure on profitability and companies are looking at ways to, to leverage technology to help them kind of variableize their expenses um, and, and to help them improve the, the, you know, the, the response to cyclicality and deal with kind of the, the scalability issue that exists in the industry and just drive down costs. And so uh, we're, we're again excited to work with, with the Zeral team and and uh, work with uh, with a number of our clients in this area, and, and we think there's tremendous opportunities. So with that, we'll we'll just uh, leave a few minutes here for questions. I know we don't have much time, but uh, but Dan, if you would, uh, you know, just uh, take over here, and if there's questions for us to respond to, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that with the last few minutes we have. Sure. So um, the first question that came in, and we thank you all for those questions, is um, will you have D1 certainty with the income calculator? So the objective here is, uh, yes, we would like to go back to the agencies later on in the year and become uh, D1 certified. Uh, the next question is, uh, how long does it take to get set up? Well, each different solution takes uh, a certain amount of time. These are highly configurable, and it really depends on what solution you want to start with. For an example, uh, if you were doing the purchase advice warehouse line automation solution, um, and you're using most of the standard warehouse banks and standard uh, investor suite, um, we can have that up and running within 60 days. Um, and you would want to talk about costs with, uh, with Nathan uh, and the Richie May team. We just handle kind of the, the technology piece of it. Um, but that is a very uh, straightforward integration and robotic process automation. So PA, uh, PA warehouse line automation can be stood up in under 60 days. Um, and just a, a quick metric to that, um, we sat with a customer recently on the PAA warehouse line automation, and um, they process about 100 to 110, maybe even as high as 140 purchase advices on a daily basis. And it takes one and a half to two people all day, like an eight hour day to monitor all those different investor sites and to manually process all those purchase advices and get them all over to the warehouse line and, and do the data entry into their LOS. Um, when we apply the robotic process automation, we can boil that population of 140 down into less than 10 minutes. So you can see that there's tremendous scale and optimization of resources when you start to apply 
this technology in the in the proper way and at the proper place. Okay, I don't have any more questions in the queue. I think there's there's one popping up here. Um, you know, Dan, just in terms of the ongoing you know maintenance, and uh, I think both you and Eric made reference to this. Um, you know, things obviously change. You know, with investor portals or on the underwriting side, maybe with uh, with a borrower document or something. And so, uh, you know, things change over time. And the question is, how you know how are these maintained and and uh, you know, support it going forward. Sure. So um, part of the, um, the the pricing of the of the solution includes the subscription to the platform, and so within that subscription are the automated or the updates and uh, and triaging of changes. So uh, we know from experience that uh, investor portals, for example, will change. Uh, their process or the LOS will come in with uh, with, a, with an enhancement or a new version. So we have to continually monitor with the customer, with you, uh, what those changes are. And so the, the support team is, is available to uh, facilitate those changes or because our, our platform is 100% transparent, um, depending on your company capabilities, capacity and competency, we can actually train you to manage your, your platform yourself. And so that's another differentiator, whereas most of the technical uh, applications out there, third-party services are black boxes. The Richie Mays are all platform is completely transparent. So you can actually see behind the curtain what's going on. And to Eric's point earlier, we employ low code, no code. So you don't need very sophisticated business, uh, I'm sorry, uh, software developers and engineers on staff. A lot of times your system analysts or BAs can facilitate those changes. If you would like to dig deeper behind the curtain from a technical standpoint, I would suggest reaching out to uh, Richie May and scheduling some time where we can actually show you the platform. Yep. Thanks for that, Dan. And uh, I know we're at time here. And again, just uh, thank all of you for taking the time out of your day. And, and uh, it's obviously a very busy time for everybody. We appreciate you taking some time to share with us here today. And, and uh, we're, we're excited to present this to you and to be working with Zoral and and to to have this um, to have the opportunity to work with our clients around automation. We believe that it's truly transformative and can be, you know, as impactful as just about anything on the on their organizations and and on the business going forward. So thank you all for taking the time and thank you to the Zoral team and and uh, if you have questions. Uh, that, uh, that you'd like to explore further or would like to, to explore the platform further, uh, please reach out. We'd love to visit with you and uh, in a little bit more depth. So thank you again, everybody, and have a great, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.